in, practical feng shui and practical and make it for the lay person. Someone like me who does not understand exactly, but I do believe in it because I see how things multiply and you go out to nature and you know that the number of branches, the lum- number of uh, uh, needles on a, a pine tree and the pine cone and all those things are not random because I, I'm out there in nature and I see this at work. And the thing is, for example, if you go into a hotel room and it's square, it feels comfortable. If you go into a, uh, a room at a round hotel, for example, the Bonaventure, it used to be the Bonaventure downtown. Right. Maybe it still is. And you go into, and there's a place on um, Lake Union. It used to be the Marriott up in Seattle. Oh, uh, up in Seattle, on Lake Union, there is a round, you know, these cone shaped, uh, I'm sorry, columnar, cylindrical shaped buildings. Okay. Where. The rooms are wedge shape. There are no corners. Okay. Right. You do not feel comfortable. You, uh, human, be- uh, most people do not feel comfortable sleeping in a round bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we there's something in our makeup. I don't know what it is. Now again, I'm not the the you know the person who deals with you know I'm not the expert on this. But there's something for us that gravitates or craves or needs this geometry. We like square rooms, rectangular rooms, nothing with angles and shapes. And in feng shui, we also do not like that. We like everything to be, you know, what we call balance. A square or rectangular room is balanced. An L-shaped room is not as balanced, but at least it has, you know, 90-degree corners, you know, what I'm saying. Absolutely. But when you go into a room that has angled, you know, I'm not talking about a bay window now. I'm talking about when the whole wall is at different angles. And some people have homes like this. And sometimes the hallways are like that. It's okay for a hallway, but when you sleep in a room and there are four walls or there are five walls or there are six walls and they, they don't mesh and they, they're at different angles and they're they're combined with square corners and 40, you know, maybe if, a, if it's a 45-degree angle or it's a 90-degree angle, that's okay. But when it goes into, oh, it's 22-and-a-half angle wall, you know what I'm saying? Right. There's something about it that makes us very uncomfortable. Now, there, there's another fascinating topic. Why do people crave this? Why do we feel uncomfortable when we're in a wedge-shaped room? Okay, but in feng shui, we want that balance. And the balance only comes with those, you know, the 90 degree, uh, 45 degrees or whatever. But not all of the walls. I mean, if you uh, were sitting or sleeping in a, um, a room that was octagon shaped, that's okay. That might be okay. You could, you know, and I've seen that too. But you wouldn't want to sleep in it. It's okay. If, you know, round is okay. You, you can be in a cylindrical shape room, you know, around, totally 360 degrees, and, you know, sit at a round table or an oval. Those are okay. But once you get into these odd <laughs> degrees and odd numbers and... There's obviously a mathematics to this, too. Can we talk about color for a moment? Sure. I noticed that you talk about red and purple in your financial success book. Yes. Purple being associated with wisdom and wealth. Yeah. And red being associated with fame and celebrity and potential and prosperity. Yeah. Why? Well, first of all, uh, we look, let's go back to the elements. Okay. The elements tell us that um, all, uh, metal comes, all metal comes from earth, correct? Yes. And what, do, uh, what is our, um, our money come from? Before we had paper money, we had metal. We had metal, and we still do. Yeah. Coins are worth a lot right now, and it's forged from metal. Do you know why we don't have square coins? No, because they're pointed. They're pointed on the corners, and will rip your clothes when you put them in your pocket. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 that's just... I thought you were going to tell me something that wasn't obvious, but I'll accept that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the Chinese coin is a circle. 
all right, because it's easy to carry, and the square in the, it's square, so the circle represents uh, metal, the square re represents the earth, so earth and metal are together. So we have met, uh, the earth, we have heaven, earth, and a man holding a coin is between metal, you know, the metal and the earth. But the color red, you're red. suggesting people wear it. Yes. The red color, oh, and the coin, the, the, the square hole, by the way, is so that you could string the coins together. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Now, why red? Red is the color of life. Red is the color of blood. Red is the color of prosperity. Red is the color of protection. Red is the color of happiness. Now, in Kabbalah, the red string yes. that Kabbalists wear... Yes is also considered for protection. And yes. I think it's very interesting. Is it a frequency issue? Is it the frequency red is protective? How is it protective? I think that, now, this is pure conjecture. Okay. I took anth uh, cultural anthropology back in college. That was a long time ago. Do you remember when man human beings or humanoids discovered fire? I wasn't around, but please tell me about it. Fire, right? Well, they didn't discover fire. But they realized that the wild animals that would make them their lunch or dinner would be deterred by fire. Okay. And fire is red. Is it red or orange? Fire, well, fire is heat. Fire yeah. is red. Wow. Okay. So I think that may have something to do with it. Also, blood, which is represents life. Right. Okay. That might have something to do with so it. So red is not necessarily angry. Oh, no. Not at all. Not in Chinese culture, it isn't. Well, I had a red background on my website. Yes. Encasing the site. It's rainmaking time. I loved it, but some people were put off by it. Right. Too intense for some people. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. Some people don't like to wear red. It's just too, it's too bright. It's too, there's something. I love red. I do, too. I was born in an element of, uh, you know, my uh, Chinese zodiac animal, um, uh, and it, it, it's one of the elements. It, every element, every animal, the 12 animals, uh, depending on what year you were born, okay, is a element. And mine happens to be a, uh, the element of fire. That's why I love red. I also love purple. Purple's yeah. gorgeous. Well, I love to purple, too. But th then you say, how do you get uh, purple? Purple comes from blue and red, doesn't it? That's true. Fire and water. But f uh, water, actually, in Chinese is, uh, is black. And that's why you say, do you see red, red and black a lot in Chinese themes? Yes. Uh-huh. And that's it. Water and fire. That's the combination. What would you like to have happen in the next 10 years for you? Is there certain something that you'd like to do? I know you're publishing a lot. I would like to see um, my work help people. I would like to share my knowledge. Um, I know that each one of us has a finite time on this earth, and uh, I would like to share my knowledge so people don't have to go through what, you know, what I did, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, that steep learning curve that people need. I'd like to share that with as many people as I can and help people and make a difference in their lives in some way. I think you're already doing that, don't you? Don't you think you're already so. doing I that? Know. I mean, you've trained a lot of people. Well, you know, there are many, you know, on many levels, both as a cancer survivor, as a, a mother, as an adoptee, as an entrepreneur, as a feng shui consultant, as a writer. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of things I've learned, and I, just li I, I like sharing it. And if people are interested, um, you know, that's great. I, I, that's what I'd like to do. Do you think that feng shui can help governments? Do you think that government buildings, government offices, government locations could be retooled yes. for more harmony? I think that um, absolutely. We have looked at uh, the White House, for example, terrible feng shui there, spokes of a wheel, the French uh, architect who designed it. Terrible. All those streets coming, aiming towards the center like a target. You realize that when you look at it, the, you know, all those circles that break up, you know, DuPont Circle and all those other circles in Washington. 
causes a lot of disharmony and uh, 